Tenakota YouTube. This is just a quick, uh, quick one too on how my uh, my table saw, my little table trim saw, is work that I made. Um, so the key parts to, to building a trim saw, a table saw for carving ponamu, a wet one, um, is the spindle and the block that it sits on under here. Okay, and then look at the other side. Under there, it sort of sticks out that way with the locking nut on the thread. Now, this part here I think would be the hardest part for me to source again. I don't even know where to get these from because I got this given to me. This came from my great grandfather. It was it was in his workshop, um, so I was pretty lucky about that one. Um, and I mounted it on the on the wood, and bought the electric motor. So obviously you need a belt which goes up to the electric motor. The electric motor is plugged in over there with a switch. That's the on-off switch. Um, and the way it works, or well, the key part I guess is this hinge here. So I'll just put this camera down for a sec. I might take the belt off. So, um, so this belt is just a standard car belt I got from an automotive shop. Um, and this is mounted on the hinge. So the weight of it, which is pretty heavy, will go up and down. That's what creates the tension for the belt um, to make it spin. So those are the, the working, the moving parts of the tile saw, or not really a tile saw, the diamond saw, the table saw. I guess the other important part, or well, you've got to make some sort of table, um, this is actually a, um, what do you call it, when you put a computer screen on it, a monitor, monitor rater, and um, I just got a grinder and cut a slit through the middle there, so it's solid steel stuff, and it works really well. Um, and then for water, so my water system starts up here in that bucket and comes down to those little taps there and feeds through into the top with this big shield on it. And then it all just falls off here and drips into this or onto the table or the floor sometimes too. Um, and I guess with the amount I use this, I don't actually have anything coming out of this. It just dries out on its own in the climate I live in. And with, uh, yeah, like I said, the amount that I use it. And this collects pretty much all. You can see there isn't anything on the on the wall over there. So this collects pretty much all of it there. Um, so that's the nuts and bolts of how I made my own tile saw. Um, I guess an alternative to this, and, and the second thing I bought was over here. Now this is a an actual um, tile saw, sliding tile saw. And so there's water fed from the bucket up there, which runs out really quick. This uses a lot of water. Comes down and feeds through into here. And this will slide forward and back. So you can place a piece against the edge here and just gently pull it through. Now this is a, is a good saw. Um, they both have their pros and cons. Um, this one here actually has a, a lower, a smaller, smaller cutting, di cutting depth. Um, but it cuts straight every time. As long as you've got a big enough piece that it can sit against the, um, the end here, it'll cut straight all the way through. Um, so it's more reliable in that sense. Whereas this saw over here, um, this all works on eye and um, holding things straight. And so it's not always as accurate, but it's actually got a, a bigger depth, bigger cutting depth. Um, and it's more versatile for doing small cuts as well. So yeah. So that's what I, what I cut up my my, my pone number on um, at the moment. Hope there's something in there that might help you if you're on the journey to looking at table saws or working out how to make something like that work. Yeah, kia ora koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.